don't you add me to this devil conversation you're having right now. Wow, we're in Utah. This is my first time here, everybody. My very first time in Utah. And I've learned that this is a very exciting evening for you guys. <laughs> you like, I like to talk to people from Utah and I say, so do you, do you have fun here in Utah? You get a little defensive, like, we have fun. We have fun. You know, we'll, we'll break out a game of Twister occasionally. <laughs> A couple of those legs and arms get a little close to each other. <laughs> Isn't that right, Susan? Oh, don't you add me to this devil conversation you're having right now. Between you and him, I don't want to know about it. I'm, I'm not from these parts. I'm from Canada. Oh, well, thank you, but we're building a wall. So... <laughs> Sorry about that one. <laughs> We're making you pay for it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's adorable what so many Americans don't know about Canada. Did you guys know that we celebrate Thanksgiving on a different day? Yeah. Did you know that? I was talking to a woman in the States that freaked when I told her. She's like, get out. Do you celebrate Christmas on a different day too? <laughs> I'm not kidding, I said, yes, yes, we do. <laughs> In Canada, Jesus is a Gemini. <laughs> you know, he's got a twin, because he's a... <laughs> All right, never mind, let's move on. Let's, uh... <laughs> so funny, every time I tell people from America I'm from Canada, especially on stage, immediately, hey, how's it going, Harry? You're like, you do, do I sound like I have an accent to you guys? I'll tell you, because if you think I do, I challenge you to get on a Greyhound bus, travel your country, See how many straight talking English people you come across. Why don't you start in Minnesota? Oh, Minnesota, eh? We're gonna have a fun tater tot time with this fella, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Aren't we, Susan? Oh, you betcha, Betsy. <laughs> you have beautiful cities with beautiful sounding names that your accents butcher. I was in Lexington, Kentucky. A few people were like, hey man, a few of us were gonna go, oh, you wanna come? I'm like, what? Well, <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna go, oh. I'm like, did you just stop speaking English there for a second? No, I'm just going, Hoo. I'm like, are you having a stroke right now? Like, you don't mean Louisville, do you? <laughs> a beautiful sounding city. I go to Louisville. I don't know if I go, History of that city, foreign people have visited it. They've had to learn the correct pronunciation of it. People from England. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please protrude your tongue as far out your mouth as you can and make a sound. <laughs> Even now, correctly, that's a problem. Let's crack on, shall we? I love your country. I do. You know my favorite? You know my favorite accent? Alabama. Oh, have you guys, have you done? Have you been to Alabama? Rotide, exactly. You can't say Alabama without someone going, Rotide. <laughs> Especially in Alabama. You say it, Alabama, Rotide. It's like Alabama Tourette's. <laughs> I was on a cruise ship. I performed in Al out of Alabama. God forbid that, that cruise got taken over by a group of terrorists, but we all had great hiding spots. <laughs> All a terrorist would have to do is go, Alabama Rota! <laughs> what the heck are you doing? He said Alabama, what the heck was I supposed to do? <laughs> well, you're gonna get us killed. All right, doctors. Alabama Rota! <laughs> I can't not say it. I can't not say it. <laughs> yep. I love it here. It's, you know, I, and I, the only thing that is not fun is getting into your country. God, your border security, man. I was, like I was coming over here and I was wearing a hat and I wear a hat when I travel because I'm getting a sunburn right now. <laughs> like, yeah, I showed my passport to the security guard. He goes, oh, take your hat off. I go, why? He goes, I need to identify you. Go, You're looking right at me, man. <laughs> Would you be shocked if I took my hat off and I was a black guy? <laughs> Like, 
what's he thinking? Oh, here I am, oh, where'd I go? Here I am, where'd I go? Here I am, where'd I go? <laughs> this guy's supposed to protect your country. He hasn't even mastered peekaboo. <laughs> been performing on all the cruises. Have you guys, have you done one? Yeah? It's funny, it's great. So you, you travel, you get out of Utah? Do you get out of Provo, where we're at right now? Yeah, do you just pack your bags and just head to Salt Lake or something like that? Do you guys, do you do that? I'll tell you, for those of you that haven't done a cruise, I'm gonna tell you something. The amount of food on one cruise could end world hunger. <laughs> It's phenomenal. So you gotta know that cruises tend to attract Jurassic people. I'm talking like dinosaurs in NFL jerseys are grazing these buffets. Like, Don't you feel that? Uh, uh. I'm not kidding, guys. Just some of the fattest, dumbest people are on these cruise ships. It's Walmart on water. <laughs> Was that too much for some of you? Oh my goodness, stop. I need cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to know where the most spoiled children on the planet are? They're on a Disney cruise. If you haven't done that one, I'm telling you, it's like thousands of children that don't deserve it. And I'm on stage selling my soul doing Mickey Mouse impressions for these kids. Like, I'm up here, I'm going, hey, kids! <laughs> Why don't the strawberry cross the road? It's gonna jam, huh? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> to butter my bread. And everything's going fine until this one 11 year old starts heckling me. And he's loud, this guy sucks. <laughs> you really sound like Mickey Mouse. He's got the ears for it. <laughs> And no one working that ship's gonna walk over and talk to this kid and say, excuse me, there's no talking while the comedian's on stage. Because Disney's attitude is, hey, this kid's not happy. Dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> and he's sitting all by himself and he won't shut up. Finally, I looked at him. I said, well, hey, well, where's the rest of your family? He says, they're sitting over there. I said, so they can't stand you either. <laughs> So don't do Disney Mormon, Provo, Utah now. Hi, everybody. <laughs> no, it's good. It's great to be here. You guys seem like you're in a good mood tonight. Is that true? Are you feeling good? Yeah. Is it because there's no kids in here? <laughs> See, I've learned children are like farts. You don't mind them when they're your own. <laughs> but when there's someone else's, they're disgusting. <laughs> Actually, you guys want to hear something interesting? My sister just had her very first baby. And she made me the godfather. Can I tell you, ever since, I've been calling my sister every day, making sure she's eating right, sleeping well, exercising, because I don't want to take care of this kid. My new job is to keep her alive. Like she's spending all the freedom I'm working very hard to keep. It's like, you're the new godfather, aren't you so excited? Like, I'm gonna make you the godmother of my mortgage. <laughs> and I was the 
last to know. They told me it's some family function. Even my parents, he's going to be so excited when you tell him. He's just going to be over the moon. And I look like I got my name called for the Hunger Games. <laughs> I don't have a skill. I can't. <laughs> like, my family, they don't understand my attitude towards children. Like, they don't, they've never been traveling like I do. You ever been on an airplane with a screaming baby? It's a powerful contraceptive. It's a five-hour condom commercial. It is... Like, this happened to me on my way over here to Utah. Like, I had some two-year-old behind me wouldn't shut up the whole time. Just like... like everyone's waiting for the parent to do something, just sitting there in this exhausted mom coma, just... Won't shut up. <laughs> Everyone around is reading that terrible airplane magazine, trying to pretend this isn't happening. Like, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> you could just cry and cry, and I can't smoke a cigarette on this plane. <laughs> Even the captain came on. Skip, this is your pilot speaking. I got a shot of Jack, so that smacks that circus midget in 17C. I'll crash the next mountain, folks. Don't push me. Don't push me. You know, the worst is when you stare at the parent, because that's the only move you have. And they try to laugh it off with you. Like, it's not breaking your ears. Like, he's a screamer, isn't he? I know, I just don't know what to do about it. What did I do? I did like to scream. I just let him go. I think that's the greatest thing you can do for a baby, because you just like to scream. You, you, do, you do like to scream. He like to scream. I just let him go, because I think that's the greatest thing you can do for a baby. You just let him go. It's just the greatest thing that I think Why don't you go to a bookstore? Get something on how to deal with a dysfunctional kid and chuck it at his face. <laughs> so I'm single. <laughs> yeah, you guys are like, yeah, no, we got that, Dylan. That's, that's not math you need to put on the board or anything. We totally understand that. Yeah. No, it's true. Uh, actually, my, my last uh, girlfriend was American because I'm working on a green card. <laughs> so if there's any uh, single gals in here, I'd be happy to trade you for some free health care. <laughs> <laughs> too soon. Too soon, Utah. Sorry. Too soon. <laughs> yeah, well, she really wanted to have babies with me, and I want money and freedom. <laughs> you can't have both. <laughs> No, we, she was relentless too. Like we'd be at a mall and she's pointing out other people's babies to convince me, sweetie, look at this face and look how well behaved this baby is, Dylan. I said, then honey, grab that one. Cause you don't get to pick the one that comes out of you. You know that, right? It could be some golem creature like her. We've like, all seen Lord of the Rings. That guy's got parents. It's so expensive, these babies. God, they grow up, like, God, and then they, they go up to college. It's like super expensive. And you gotta pick the right education. I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Drama. That's like majoring in welfare. <laughs> it's by far the worst degree you could get. I had a buddy of mine graduate with me today. He works at a haunted house. And I said to him, I said, well, hey, man, hook me up with a job. He goes, whoa, whoa, it's not that easy. I can't just hook you up. You got to audition. I'm like, what are they looking for? Can you say boo? How bad was the guy that didn't get that job? Meow. Meow. Bah. Just boo, buddy. That's all we were looking for. Like they're only hiring Broadway actors to play these ghosts. Is that how competitive it's getting? Some guy, well, I played King Lear three years in a row, ladies and gentlemen. I'm like, why the ghost? You'll see. Oh, here comes the people. <laughs> I am a ghost. Oh, boo. Hello. <laughs> boo, would you like another? All right, boo. I continue long, continue long. 
I find you quite frightened. <laughs> Yeah, man. It's so nice visiting you guys, and then I gotta fly back home. Man, I'm not a fan of flying. I don't know if we have any airline stewards in here. We have to have a meeting with airline stewards. Their OCD drives me crazy. You've you been on an airplane? Like, you know how you gotta tuck your, your bag underneath that front seat? They go crazy, sir, you gotta tuck that in more? Gotta tuck that, it's like sticking out half an inch? We're all gonna die. Everybody's gonna die. <laughs> Sir, could you put your window down before takeoff? Captain can't see! Captain can't see! Is he looking out of my window? <laughs> sir, we're about to land. Just your top button, if you could do it up. Just hit that top button, sir, for, for, for safety. I'm a hero, I know what I'm talking about. And you have a hair sticking out, sir. Just mat that down, if you could. It's in the way of vision, sir. Just... They're crazy. They'll wake you up to put your seatbelt on. Really, that's important on an airplane? 250 passengers survived a mountain crash all wearing their seatbelts. <laughs> Is that what happens when you hit a mountain? Oh my goodness, I almost crashed, but I didn't. I was wearing my seatbelt. Oh, stop it. That tickles. Oh my goodness. I almost spilled my Coke. Oh, stop. That guy, he went through the windshield. Not me. I was wearing my seatbelt. <laughs> Yeah, this last flight was a long one. I was told to drink a lot of water because of the air pressure, so I listened. I had to pee the whole time. And had a middle seat, which for me is the fetal position. <laughs> Normally, I would have just gone up and went, but the dude that had the aisle was this giant biker, and he was sleeping. I didn't want to wake him, because I like living. <laughs> he was making weird sounds and snoring, too. Like, have you ever a biker snore? It's not regular, like, there's death threats. Like, <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> I'm the king of this prison, you fellas, I tell you. I got this woman has the window, doesn't even speak English. Like, I mean, I, I'm trying to vent about what I'm going through. She doesn't understand me. I sound like an old man at a deli. I'm like, oh my goodness, I got a piece so bad here. Why can't we go any faster? What is the traffic in the air? Maybe there's a bird in the way. Let's go around the bird. Is there a manual? Maybe a co-pilot we can talk to. I gotta go. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Like MacGyver in my head, I'm gonna leapfrog this guy. So I do, I stand up, I grab my leg, and I throw it over this guy's lap, and I get stuck. Because this guy's thighs are like tree trunks. I'm trying to wedge out, he's about to wake up like, oh, <laughs> rock goodbye, baby. Oh, the tree top. Right there, his eyes open. <laughs> yeah, I look at the guy behind him for some help, he gives me one of these. <laughs> This biker looks up and goes, what the heck are you doing? I said, I have to pee. <laughs> and I can't move. This guy thinks I'm about to unzip and redecorate his denim jacket. <laughs> I made it here. Finally made it to Utah. The land of the beautiful blonde. It's you guys. You're so pretty. <laughs> I have a buddy of mine who is like amazing with women and he tries to help me and I don't like it. I don't like how he treats women. He is a player. It bothers me even more that girls fall for him. He calls himself Chocolate D. Watching him work is incredible. Watching girls fall for this guy right here, baby. Yo, how you doing? How you doing? Yo, I saw you walking a bar, girl. Thank you for that miniskirt, baby. Thank you for that miniskirt. Oh, yeah. What's your name? 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 Samantha. That's a good name, baby. That's a good name, girl. Yeah, baby. Later, I'm gonna take that body back to my place and flip it over, baby. I am gonna flip it over. It works. I'm at the bar watching this, losing my mind. I don't care that you women look over at me and go, hey, look, the kid from Mad Magazine grew up.
I'll stare right back at you. Yeah. Chick magnet. <laughs> I like how you guys here, you very much celebrate religion. It's really nice. I was not raised religious at all. My parents are Jewish, but I was raised with no religion at all. My, for Hanukkah, my parents don't celebrate it. I've not gotten one gift for that holiday in my life. Like, I don't even think my parents were even Jewish. I think they're cheap Catholics. <laughs> Yeah, my dad's still like, you know, Dylan, when you die, you're gonna get judged for saying that. I said, no, I'm not. The devil accepts everyone. <laughs> Which I think is a nice quality in a person. He doesn't judge you, shame you, blame you, criticize you, guilt trip you. That's unconditional love, by the way. I'm not trying to rewrite the Bible. I'm just saying we may miss something with this particular character. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> He's welcoming each and every one of us. Yes, come in, everyone. <laughs> yes, Christians, Jews, Utah, come in, yes. <laughs> Was that too much for you guys? You all right? Yeah, I know, that's a dangerous impression to do. You guys are gonna, most, yeah, some of you are gonna leave tonight going, oh my God, the devil's a Jew. <laughs> I've been Dylan Mandelson. Thank you guys very much for having me.